Matt Corral, can he beat out Sam Darnold? What does this mean for CMC, DJ Moore, and Robbie Anderson? We're here to break that down right now on the Rasball Fantasy Football Podcast. Welcome to another fantastic episode of the Rasball Fantasy Football Podcast. I'm your host, Bobby Lamarco. If you're watching us right now on Periscope, we're jumping on YouTube. Go to Rasball Fantasy YouTube right now to watch all our shows. Hit the comments. Let us know what your thoughts. Today, we're breaking down Matt Corral and the, his, his draft pick to the Carolina Panthers. Panthers. What does this mean for Sam Darnold and company? Before we do, we want to make sure everyone's following us across the board. You follow us on YouTube at Rasball Fantasy. Make sure you're jumping over to TikTok and IG. We're doing daily content on there as well at Rasball Fantasy. And finally, make sure you're going to Rasball.com. Not only are we doing amazing things and a bunch of great stuff coming soon on Rasball.com, but make sure you go check out for our baseball content. We have articles dropping every day. You got animated videos dropping over there. We have a bunch of stuff. So make sure you're going to Rasball.com for all your needs for basketball, hockey, baseball, and football. Now, I buried the lead long enough. I'm bringing in both my colleagues for today. It's going to be Donkey Teeth and Sky Gawasco. What's going on, gentlemen? Donkey Teeth, you first. What's up, man? Hey, what's happening, Bobby? Uh, it's uh, Saturday here doing a lot of yard work. It's a blast. Great to be on the show. Love it. Love it. Completely opposite vibe on my side. I am happy to be on the show, but it's absolutely dumping here in the Northwest per usual. So it's pouring rain. I had a lot of uh, gardening and yard work plans. Those are out the door. However, for our baseball fans tuning in here to the Rasball Football Fantasy F- Show, I have four doubleheaders today in baseball. So uh, a lot of couch time, a lot of article writing, a lot of catch up and decompression. Looking forward to it. Yeah, so boys, today we're talking about Matt Corral. For some reason, these these trifecta episodes, we're always talking about quarterbacks. But today we're dropping in Matt Corral, talking about his fit with the Carolina Panthers, his future for Dynasty. Is he competition year one for Sam Darnold? So, Sky, listen, this was your pick, so i like to give you the first dibs on this. Tell us what you learned about Matt Corral, why he might be a threat to Sam Darnold. Yeah, first question is, is he a threat to Sam Darnold? Yes, he is. Uh, Unfortunately, I actually really like Sam Darnold, as a lot of people did. Coming out number three out of USC, he was awesome with the Trojans. Unfortunately, it just didn't work out with Adam Gase. That's out the door. Gets a new shot in Carolina. Still hasn't been great, unfortunately. I like Sammy D long-term. He's still young, but his time is running out to prove himself. And Matt Corral coming in, I think, is going to be a, a, a problem for him to, to stave off. There's another quarterback I'll bring up here in the end that might be an issue as well, potentially. So Matt Corral comes in 94th pick overall, almost fell to the fourth round. And most of that falling had to do with an ankle injury that originally folks thought was essentially a broken ankle in the Sugar Bowl against Baylor on New Year's Day in the bowl game. Thankfully, I guess it was a bad sprain and not a break. So he will be hopefully healthy and ready to go. But Matt Corral really impressed this year under Lane Kiffin at Ole Miss. He was pretty so-so in his last couple of years. Two seasons ago, he threw five picks in two different games. Uh, But last season under Lane Kiffin, he had that downfield threat, and he was awesome in the SEC. Of course, again, playing against that NFL-ready talent week to week. So very impressive. Now, if we look at the Carolina Panthers last year, they were last in the entire NFL in passer rating average. So the passer rating for whichever quarterback was playing in that particular game was last on average in the entire NFL. That can only go up, obviously. But they were 16th in team passing play percentage. So the team wants to pass in kind of the middle of the pack. Matt Rule wants to throw the ball. We know that from his time at the Big 12 and Baylor. They want to throw the ball. They just couldn't do it effectively. I think Matt Corral gives them an advantage there. Sammy D's a problem. But also, there's still talks a little bit about Baker Mayfield maybe also coming over to Carolina. He's sitting out. Cleveland OTA, so we'll see what happens there. Of course, we'll discuss. But DJ Moore, one of the only wide receivers with 1,200 yards in the last three seasons. CMC, if healthy, is the best player in fantasy football. It's no question. It's just a matter of the vertical offense, and Carolina was 31st in yards per pass attempt last year. Obviously, that has to improve, and I think Matt Corral can do that. Now, DT, kind of spinning off some of the stuff that Sky said about the competition, Are you? do you really think that Matt Corral year one is a threat, or do you think this is more of a dynasty long-term situation? Yeah, I, I, you know, I hate to be the guy splashing cold water on these quarterbacks uh, for the second time in a row after we did the, the Kenny Pickett show, but yeah, I'm not, 
I'm not really seeing Matt Corral as a threat to Sam Darnold. I mean, Sam Darnold, he really had a strong start to the, the 2021 season last year. Uh, he did cool before he had that shoulder injury, but uh, I, I don't know if, if – uh, people remember how strong he started that season and the Panthers gave up uh, three draft picks for Sam Darnold just last year. One of them was a second rounder. So, you know, they got more draft capital invested in Darnold. Um, so I, you know, I'm, I'm looking at him more as a long-term play. And even that said, I, I mean, we talked about it on the Kenny Pickett show. I'm not, not excited about this uh, draft class in general, nothing really against Corral. I don't love the landing spot. There's, you know, there's, you've got a coach that's on the hot seat. Uh, you know, coming off of two five-win seasons for for Matt Rule, we didn't even know if he was going to be back back for this year. So, I mean, there's a chance that that uh, Corral never even really gets a chance uh, if if there's some turnover here in the coaching staff. Uh, but I do like I like Darnold to um, complete this season would be be my bet. And and you know I think we should we got to look at a guy like Matt Corral in uh, the context of the other quarterbacks we'd be looking at here in in Dynasty. So uh, Kenny Pickett we talked about on our last show together. Uh, he comes into a much better situation in my opinion. I don't think there's a huge uh, talent gap between these two. Everything that I've read scouting ports on Corral, he's pretty polished. He he doesn't have experience in that type of NFL system would be the knock against him, but. There's a, there's a lot to build off of, but we look at a guy like Kenny Pickett coming into uh, the Steelers organization, better weapons around him. I mean, of course, McCaffrey's great, but I don't trust him to, to stay healthy at this point in his career. And then you got DJ Moore, and then it's kind of a, a skeleton crew, more or less. There's some there's some upside for sure, but it's not like the, the Pittsburgh situation. You got a, a better coach, more established system. Uh, just everything is better about that that Steelers landing spot for for Kenny Pickett. So I think if you flip flop them, I'd be much more interested in in Corral. But it's just kind of the way the cookie crumbles with quarterback landing spots. Yeah, believe it or not, Sam Darnold is only a year older than Matt Corral. That's how young this guy was coming into the league. And on top of that, for Sam Darnold, this is going to be his fourth offense in five seasons, and the only time he had the same coordinator was Adam Gase. I don't think it can get worse for a quarterback to have this much change and his only consistency is Adam Gase. But before let's, before we even get into all that, now there is a new offense, so there is equal footing. Ben McAdoo comes in, and listen, from a Giants fan, I will tell you, not a great head coach, but the guy was a very good offensive coordinator. Eli Manning had some of his best seasons in 2014 to 2016 under his tutelage as OC, 4,200 yards, 30 touchdowns per season. So there is upside for the scheme. But like you just brought up, what if they don't do well? There could be a brand new coaching staff. That also, CMC, potential outs prior to the 2023 season. DJ Moore is under contract. Robbie Anderson could be done with under contract to 2023. Then you got Terrace Marshall, Tommy Tremble. So Sky, based on the weapons, the situation, uh, the uncertainty with quarterback, um, with the coaching staff, what's your thoughts on Matt Corral for Dynasty uh, are you willing to – what's your th- – I like him as a player. Again, I really liked the talent before he got hurt. Uh, and I, I think, again, I think a lot of him falling in the draft. There was – DT nailed it, right? We talked about it last time with Kenny Pickett. There's not a lot of excitement overall for the quarterbacks in this class, but everybody has a big question mark in some level. And for Matt Corral, it's not talent. It's not playability on the field. It's the fact that he got injured in the last game of the season, and he has to recover from that. So Carolina, I think, is going to have a total rehaul in the next two to three years. CMC is going to be gone. DJ Moore will either be the franchise guy or he'll be gone in the next two or three years. As you mentioned, everyone else will rinse out. And Matt Rule's probably going to be gone as well because as long as Tom Brady's around, they're not going to be able to compete uh, seriously in that division. So it's going to be a problem overall. So I think he'll have a rinse as it goes. So Dynasty, yes, I like the long-term play. To bounce back a little bit uh, on what DT had mentioned with the uh, exceptional first couple of games from Sam Darnold, I just want to put some some numbers behind that quickly. Because you're right, he was very impressive and then fell off a cliff kind of unexplainably. His first uh, five starts, the first four starts, excuse me, he had uh, five touchdown passes, five touchdown runs. I think people don't remember he was scoring touchdowns on the ground. So for fantasy, obviously, you get that boost. Three 300-yard games in his first four starts. After that, he had just four touchdown passes and 10 interceptions in the other seven starts. So if we get the first four games of Sam Darnold, I think Matt Corral is going to have to wait his turn. If we get the last seven games of Sam Darnold, Matt Corral could be starting 
week four, right? Depending on his health. So I, with these quarterbacks, man, I know it's, you know, third, fourth round draft capital these days for him, but because of the injury, he would have gone much higher in my opinion, if he was healthy, if he gets healthy, shows well in, in uh, OTAs and training camp, I think they will put him in earlier than later, like Desmond Ritter in, in uh, Atlanta, potentially behind Marcus Mariota. So I like Matt Corral, and he's kind of a sleeper for me in Dynasty because people are kind of waving him off right now because he's injured, and we didn't really get to see that high draft capital we were expecting. So the offensive line last year, according to PFF, was ranked 31st overall, which is not great. Uh, Terrible. They did, the, they did a lot of stuff this offseason. They brought in Bradley Bozeman, the center from the Ravens. They brought in Austin Corbett, guard from the Rams. They actually drafted – uh, Aquanu, I, I'm going to try to say his name, but sixth over, uh, fifth Nicky overall, Aquanu. They, Aquanu. So they have done a lot of work on the line. Now that gives you a little bit more uh, protection up front. But let's just say the offensive line does not gel, and there is a lot of issues. It's, uh, now, DT, kick it over to you. Do you see anything in Matt Corral's game that he might be able to handle that kind of pressure? Because we know Sam Darnold's a pocket guy. So is there any thoughts about Matt Corral maybe being a better fit behind a worse offensive line? Well, yeah, I mean, you know, scouting report on him, he he needs a system with those type of short slants, get rid of the ball quick. He can get outside the pocket and and throw with a, a certain degree of accuracy. So, yeah, I mean, you know, it, Sam Darnold came in with incredible scouting report, right? He was, uh, what was he, number two overall pick uh, in yeah. his draft class, I think. So, yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't want to say he's better, but I, I do think there's upside with Corral. I just, uh, like I'll go back to, I... I think that Darnold, to push back on what Sky said in response to my Darnold comments, I'm not going to sit here and, and plant my flag on Sam Darnold by any means. But Christian McCaffrey got hurt. Uh, it was week four, week week three, week four. So mm -hmm. that's pretty uh, – put the pieces together. Sam Darnold took a dive when Christian McCaffrey got hurt. Of course, we I, like I said, we can't uh, trust McCaffrey to be healthy this season. But then are you even interested in Matt Corral in, in uh, an offense with – Zero weapons, no Christian McCaffrey, skeleton crew. So, uh, and then at the, the end of the season, Darnold was coming off the, the shoulder injury. So, yeah, I kind of give him a pass. Again, I'm not like going to, to bat here by any means for for Darnold. I just think he holds off the rookie that that probably. I also mentioned this when, when uh, we started the show, but uh, Corral doesn't have any experience in an NFL type system. You know, a lot of shotgun work for him. So I think there's probably quite a bit to learn. Not that he can't learn it, not that he doesn't have a strong base. I, I do see the upside. It's just a, a lot of risk, a lot of reward. But also, Sky mentioned uh, the other positive. He's practically free in drafts and dynasty drafts. So, yeah, I mean, if you need a quarterback, why, why the heck not? Yeah, so let's talk a little bit about this. Uh, and we get it, DT. You're, you're buying Sam Darnold. If you're in a league with DT, just, just give it to him. I mean, the guy's literally banging on a table for Sam Darnold truther. I like it, dude. I didn't know that about you. It's good stuff. Uh, let's talk a little bit about some ADP stuff, uh, data. So first off, best ball ADP, I mean, Matt Corral's 262, way out of range. We probably don't even need to address that. But let's talk a little bit about Dynasty rookie rankings because most of this stuff is single QB. He's going 30th overall right by, you know, running backs like Davis Price and right ahead of guys like Tyquan Thornton and Romeo Dobbs, the fourth rounder for the Packers. So I guess my question for you is kick it down to you, Sky. From a Dynasty perspective, is that a good price for you uh, if you are in need at quarterback? Bob, can I clarify? Are you looking at Superflex or single QB? I would say single QB, yeah. Okay, yeah, because the Superflex will go much higher than that. just want to clarify for listeners. Single, single QB, look, again, I'm – a little bit more bullish on on Matt Corral. I just am uh, with what he had with his talent. Kind of like last year when I was kind of looking at him and preview previewing uh, for this year's draft class, I was very impressed with what he had to play. He had a great game against Georgia, great game against Alabama, um, and great game against Arkansas, which blew him up the year before that. So he really bounced back, and he and Lane Kiffin really gelled well. Uh, he had some huge games. So I think the talent is there. I do like Matt Corral. And again, if I'm going to go with Matt Corral with like long-term upside, knowing that if I draft him, I know that I don't need a quarterback right away. I've already got a starter, maybe a, a second one. Um, and in dynasty, maybe a third one even, right, uh, in single quarterback. But he's a long-term play. I could put on my taxi squad, wait till he gets healthy, see what happens with Sam Darnold in the next year or two. I do want Matt Corral over a guy like a, you know, fourth-round running back who may not even see the field. I do like Taquan Thornton a little bit. Um but he might be the only guy of the of the people you mentioned in that range. I might look after him, but I'm kind of a, a Matt Corral guy. DT can have 
Sam Darnold, I'll take Matt Corral. We'll call it even. Love it. Love it. And I'll take I'll take PJ Walker. Screw it. We all there have we, a, we all have a Carolina quarterback. Love it, love it. Now, DT, let's get your thoughts on his ADP. Pick whatever you want, best ball or dynasty. Yeah, well, best ball, I'm not interested. You you probably gathered that from my my Darnold comments. Uh, yeah, I just don't see him having value this season personally. But uh, dynasty, I think that that's that's totally fair. I, I I mean, I'm on the same page as you, Sky, in in a dynasty league. If you need a quarterback, I do like the upside and the price. It's totally fine. You, you know, there's not much risk there when when you get to that stage. And actually, Taekwon Thornton was the the name that they kind of jumped out at me that I would rather mm-hmm. uh, have over him on that list as well. But um, yeah, I think Superflex is is where he does become a, a little bit more interesting in in dynasty leagues. If you can snag him in the the second round of a Superflex dynasty rookie draft, then uh, yeah, I, I I do like Corral's upside. I'm just not in the immediate future, and I see the risk of him, you know, turning into a zero as being very real. Yeah, and, right. and and just to just to bounce on DT one more time here, the the I think that's a great point that you had mentioned that dynasty owners specifically dynasty players in general need to kind of keep uh top of mind as you go into drafts here in the next couple of weeks and months. It's about team need, of course, but it's all like long term and win now and those kind of things. We are talking third, fourth round in a dynasty, like do you want a wide receiver three on his own team in the NFL, wide receiver nine on your on your fantasy team? Or do you want a quarterback that has the most upside and potential in a year or two? If you're waiting on all those players at that point of your dynasty draft anyway for next year, two years from now, why not take a guy that could be the starter and we know how potent quality quarterbacks should be? And he didn't light it up on the ground by any means, but we're talking Sam Darnold versus Matt Corral. Matt Corral is absolutely more mobile uh, when he gets healthy than Sam Darnold was, so he might be able to put a little bit up on the ground for you as well. Okay, that's all we have for you guys. This is the latest episode of what you need to know heading into your drafts for all these rookies. This was Matt Corral going to the Panthers. Once again, I'm your host, Bobby Lamarco. Make sure you're following us across the board on Razzball Fantasy YouTube, IG, and TikTok. And make sure you're going to Razzball.com to get all the latest needs in sports and fantasy football for every sport you can imagine. Like I said, for Donkey Teeth, for Sky Gawasco, folks, we're out of here. <laughs>